What's up guys? We are off on a rescue mission and what are we going to rescue? Craft beer. So let's go. All right, I should probably give you guys a little bit more context before we arrive. So what we've got is we've got a craft beer brewery. They are shutting down. Apparently they were given 30 days notice that they had to leave. Now that the 30 days has expired, their electricity and their water's been cut off. You know I like to fo focus on positive uh, China stories, but the fact of the matter is, you know, bad things do happen sometimes, whether it's in business or, you know, you're, you, you get caught in a, a tough situation, just like with any country. And so, because this video is about a rescue operation, I'm not gonna go through a very undue effort to try to figure out what's going on and come up with an explanation for it. Because as I said, bad things sometimes happen, just like with any country. I will give you my theory, because what is supposedly happening is the building is being demolished. And there is no way, I think, there's no way that the landlord would have known only 30 days before. This probably would have been a negotiation for a long time and people here kind of dream of having their property repossessed by the government because the payouts are so big. And actually what I found out was if you guys saw my road trip video towards the end in Guilin, there were some like, they looked like abandoned houses. Originally I thought they were houses that were built and they didn't have the building permits and the government came in and shut them down. But actually what it is is that land along that river, what is happening is that the government is planning on reclaiming that land soon and they are playing the system. The villagers are playing the system. What they did was they built a structure of a house so that they'd get more compensation because you don't only get compensated for the land, but you get compensated for the square footage of the property on the land. And it doesn't matter if it's only half finished. So that's why they only made the frame. So back to the main point, who, what, who, who, this building, if it's being repossessed in Shenzhen, you can be sure there's a pretty darn big payout that's coming along with it. Now onto my theory. What I think happened was this landlord held this information from the tenant and probably his contract that he has with the tenant says that he only needs to give him 30 days notice. And of course there's going to be a compensation clause in there for the tenant also. He's probably uh, getting compensated according to whatever the contract says. And it's quite common for the contract to say if the landlord wants to break the contract early, then there's compensation involved. So the motive for perhaps not letting them know sooner is so that there wasn't a period of time where they could negotiate for more. It was just like get out. So it's not, it's not very nice, but I'm guessing that's what happened. But again, let's not focus on that. Why am I going to rescue the beer? So they put a public WeChat post out yesterday about the whole situation and saying that, you know what, we got all this beer, 4,000 liters of beer, it's gonna go to waste, come in and get it for free. And so a bunch of people were going yesterday and getting it for free. So I reached out to them. I had one of my staff reach out to them. I said, hey, you wanna put your uh, beer in our cold room? We've got a pretty big cold room. We've got some extra space. You can leave it there over Chinese New Year and you can figure out what to do afterwards and see if you can sell it because uh, I've, for a, f for a few reasons. One, I've been in a similar situation where just everything seems to be going wrong. You know, everything that could possibly go wrong is going wrong. And I'm sure they're going through a pretty tough time now that they gotta shut this down. Also, the craft beer community in China, it's very friendly with each other, with a few exceptions. There's a few personalities here who leave a lot to be desired, but overall, the community helps each other out. It doesn't matter if they're expats or Chinese. It's a really good community. And I've been helped out before also, uh, not only from some of the uh, Chinese people in the brewing industry, but also expats. There's an amazing Kiwi dude here in Shenzhen who makes the best cider you've ever had. He stepped up to the plate and helped us out when we really needed help. And uh, so it's just a matter of paying it forward, right? And of course, how sad would that be to dump beer down the drain? That's alcohol abuse. So anyways, from here, I'm gonna take a look at my GPS and I'm gonna see where it is because I've actually never been to this brewery, this brew pub before, but it's not too far away from us. There's a bunch of brew pubs that have opened up and um, 
a lot of them come and go. I think it's a lot more difficult than people think it is. You, a lot of you subscribers probably already know I own a brew pub. You know, we've been open for five years. At the time when I opened up my brew pub, we were one of the biggest uh, of that kind of craft beer style in Shenzhen in terms of brew pubs. And there's been a lot of people who have opened up since then and, and, and they've come and gone. So uh, I think we've been quite lucky and we've had a pretty good team. So we've managed to survive. Anyways, I don't want to ramble on too much. So let's go and let's go check out this brewery and let's see what we can do to help them. Oh, what a pity that this place has to be torn apart. I do remember this place. I've been here years ago. It was a different company who owned it then. Tamantai Oh, okay. 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 Oh, 他们管理出来一帮人把规划跌到国土局这个园区他要做了一个工业改商业这个东西政府肯定不会承认的 
那政府就就就要求他把这个钱清,清掉。哦、oh, ，你知道吗？哦，这样子，哦，是那样，是这样子。啊，要不这样子，因为我那个我小孩还在上呃上学，然后他今天发烧了。呃，问题是，我有我有员工在那边，但是现在他在忙，明天他放假了、嗯。你们可以过去，他会告诉你怎么用我们那个 C P 九通的机器，应应该跟你们这边是差不多。嗯。啊，然后他会给借给你一个那个 D 的那个 coupler。OK。啊，然后你可以就是。呃，对你到时候你去那边看一下，现在有人在那边。好的、啊、，OK， 然后就放在那里过年的时候，然后过年后你可以看呃怎么办。是是是是。是是是<笑>好的。好的。那、uh, OK， 拜、yeah, 拜。Yeah. OK guys, I had to wrap that up way quicker than I hoped. On the way there, I received a call from my third third son's school. It was his last day of pre-K before they close up for Chinese New Year, and he has a little bit of a fever. So I'm not very concerned. He, out of all of our kids, he's the one who gets fevers the most, like three to five times per year. But you can never be too careful considering what's going around. We've already seen the doctor, and they've said based on the symptoms and the order of symptoms of coronavirus, there's nothing really to be worried about. But you can never be too careful with this stuff. She gave us a lot of information about what to do if we think one of our family members does have it. There's a specific place to go to in Shenzhen, and it's actually quite remarkable how they're handling the situation. You'd never guess it by the Western media reports, but that's what I think my next video is going to be about: is about how China's handling this and what happened when I was quarantined, because I was quarantined back in 2009 during the swine flu scare. And I got put into a government facility while they were concerned that one of the guys who was on the boat from Hong Kong to Shenzhen had swine flu. But anyways, on to this main topic. To stay on the topic, this building that's being torn down that that brew pub is in that we're visiting, the owner who I was speaking to at the end, he's pretty upset about it all, understandably. He has a theory that the land is going to be repurposed and used for government offices, and there isn't much transparency between the government and the tenant. And that's maybe to be expected, no matter where you are. The transparency is going to be between the government and the landlord, and how much the tenant is able to figure out in terms of what's going on is going to depend on the quality of the landlord. And it seems like we're suffering a bit here. So they weren't given too much notice, and I followed up with him afterwards. I gave him a call to make sure he was okay with me sharing that video and also finding out a little bit more about what kind of compensation he received. So the compensation they received was three months' rent. And he's not very happy with that because to build a brewery and to invest in a business like that costs a lot more than what they would have paid for three months' rent. Now, if that's all it said in the contract, it's going to be hard for them to get more than that. And I can tell you, there's a lot of these places that you know going into the contract、uh, with certain neighborhoods or certain old buildings or what they call kind of like village land that it's going to be torn down soon. And when people go in and they lease it to build a business in there, they know there's a certain amount of risk. Involved, and they just hope that that risk doesn't come true. So when you're looking at your contracts and you have this clause saying, "Oh wow, if we get kicked out, there's only three months compensation," you're not really counting on it happening. And there's good reason to, because there's a lot of places in Shenzhen where there is a plan to tear it down. For example, there's a neighborhood I used to live in, Bai Shijiu. That neighborhood they've been saying for ten years that they're going to tear down, and I have friends who are renting. Locations there and running restaurants from there, and they're taking a risk every time they renew their lease. Hopefully, they have a better compensation package in place just in case they do get kicked out. But it's a risk they're willing to take for the other advantages in terms of being in a good location, far cheaper rent compared to being in an official commercial area or an official mall. So these are the risks that these guys are taking. In that building, it's not only him. There are, I think, ten or twelve other renters who are faced with the same issue. They're being kicked out now, and they're all pretty unhappy about it. At the end of the day, I think it's important to recognize that there is no perfect place. You know, I focused on positive content about China because I do believe that overwhelmingly, China is doing a really good job. But you're going to have stories like this. You're going to have situations where people are in a bind, and I've avoided these stories because it just feeds into people's confirmation bias. There's a lot of people who they will skip over a hundred good things about China to land on that one bad thing that happened and say, "You see, this is what we're talking about." So I think it's really unfair, and I didn't want to provide any content for that. But at the end of the day, I think it's important that I admit, of course, things like this will happen in China. If I'm continually just posting positive stories about China, the perception of my impartiality will, of course, suffer. So I think no matter what, those guys who are going to skip over all the things I've mentioned in my videos about things that are going really well here, and they're going to pick this particular thing out, 
Even if I didn't give it to them, they'll find it somewhere else. So I think I'm going to introduce some more of this kind of content and maybe have an even more detailed conversation with Andrew about what's going on there and talk to some of the other tenants there. It will be interesting to see what does eventually get built there and maybe even follow up and show you the demolition that's going on. So let me know if you would like to be kept in the loop a little bit more about that and find out a little bit more about what's going on here. This has turned into a video that I said I didn't want to turn it into, which is more about the issue of being kicked out of this location and not about saving the beer. The beer is being saved. They went over to my location. I'm lending them some kegs. They're washing them at my place. They're taking them back. They're filling them up and they're putting them in my cold room because they're making craft beer like us, which is unfiltered and unpasteurized and it needs to be kept cold. It needs to have its temperature maintained. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. And I think my next video is going to be about my quarantine experience in 2009. So with that said, I will see you guys next time.